Today on IQ Projects, we're starting on some custom bodywork for our 79 series. Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm Roy, good to see you again. So, yeah, I was going to make these two videos, but I've rolled it all into one. Um, but yeah, on Friday, I welded up um, the snorkel hull and the antenna hull in the other side of the car. Today we're back on the 79 series and we're working on the front quarter panels, front guards, whatever you want to call them. Um, these are genuine panels and from factory the 79 series has a plastic snorkel. Um, well not so much a snorkel, more just a raised air intake because personally I wouldn't trust it to keep water out. It is a two piece setup and is prone to leaks. So. I will be putting a snorkel on, but I don't want to go long entry just to cover up this hole. So before I paint, I'm going to fill over this and get it patched up. And same with on the left hand side of the car, the um, factory antenna hole. So the general process when you're patching a hole in a metal panel is to make a template either out of cardboard or masking tape or I've even seen aluminium foil used for this um, and transferring it onto some sheet metal I've got some 1.2 mil mild steel sheet and then we can fold it all up and weld it in <laughs> All right, so let's stop and explain what I'm doing here, um, which let's face it, I don't really know what I'm doing. But I, instead of using cardboard to mark this hole, I've used masking tape um, just because it's gonna follow the lines, the contours in the panel a lot neater. Um, yeah, realistically, I think it'd be smart of me to trim up to the here so that I can do this weld on a flat surface so it can be ground easily, um, which I may still do. So I've given myself a bit of extra length for this side, so I've just extended that. Um, and the other reason for that is so that I've got something to grip when I fold it. Um, and so I've given myself a decent size off cut and we're gonna use this now to try and work out my offsets um, for the fold so I can get that radius right. Um, I could try and measure it and muck around with it, but I'm just gonna go straight in and start, I don't know, messing around, trial and error, Let's see how we go. So this is just a cheap eBay sheet metal folder. Um, I'll link it in the description, but it's a lot easier than belting things over a piece of timber. And it does a nice job. Alrighty, so I had to duck out for a bit. It's a bit later in the day. Um, I had to take an engine to a shop because it's getting built uh, for the 80 series. So there will be a reveal on the 80. Um, I got a bit excited about it, announced it a bit too early, and I still haven't sort of got all my ducks lined up on that one. So it'll be happening, but it could be a couple more weeks away before you'll see too much detail on it. Anyway, here's our panel. Um, ready to go in. So it needs a bit of trimming up, a bit of linishing, but I decided that I don't want to do a weld. Oh shit, kicked you over there. I don't want to do a weld right in the bottom of this valley because it's going to be really hard to, to grind first and then to bog it and fill it nicely, make it all flat again and even the sanding is just going to be a pain. Where I've already got this beautiful radius, so why damage it? Um, because it's it's perfect fit. So what I'm going to do instead is extend this hole down a bit um, and this that'll line up with this edge and then we can have our weld out here on the flat where we can access it easy to, um, to grind it down, put a bit of filler in it, get all that sorted. So yeah. So 
Alrighty, so I don't know what you can see there with those magnets on there, but I've got that to a point where I'm happy with it. Um, the gap all around is minimal, like you're talking one and a half mil maybe maximum, one, one and a half mil. So I've just spent my time filing it down, you know, like put, clamping it in the vise. I put it back in here in the folder a couple of times and just played around with it. Um, now I can start welding it. So I've got the little piece that I cut out of the old, of the panel, and I've got a little piece of the new metal. So to get my settings right on the welder, I'm just gonna put a few tacks down on that and um, between those two layers and start playing with them. Um, so we can make sure I'm not blowing holes in this, but I'm also not piling it up too much and having a heap that I've got to grind off. So let's have a play. So after experimenting with my MIG settings um, and changing the voltage and wire speed up and down um, until I was happy with it, it was time to tack in the panel. And you'll notice I'm moving around the panel a lot and doing small tack welds. Uh, this is to try and avoid the panel getting too hot uh, because it's quite thin sheet, it will warp it as, it as it warms up, or cools down rather. Alright, so that's it all welded up. Um, looks a bit like bird shit at the moment, but it's all going to get ground flat, so it'll come up nice. Now it is time to patch this hole, and I've prepared a little plug for him. Painstakingly prepared that earlier, and then I'll plug this one as well. Um, I was going to leave him and use it as a mount for my snorkel, but let's just plug it while we're here. Then if I don't want it for the snorkel mount, I don't have to use it. If I do want it, I don't know, I'll put a rib nut next to it, it'll be fine. Alrighty, so this panel is done. So you can see the divots, but it's no worse than the than the spot weld that was next to it. Um, there's another one, and there's the patch panel, which it picked up a lot in this corner. Um, I think it got too hot when I welded that in. Um, but yeah, just giving it a coat of primer. Um, and we're ready to move on to the other one, which has the little aerial hole there. And I've got this little off cut. So I'm gonna just get it in the sheet metal bender and just sort of do a series of little little folds and hopefully get it to match up to that contour uh, quite nicely. So let's first get a heap of little marks on here parallel so I can keep it straight and get stuck into it. So this is where my eBay sheet metal folder really came into its own. Uh, this job would have been a lot harder if I had to do the whole thing with a mallet. Uh, but once I had the profile right, I then went and cut it to shape, the grinder, cleaned it up on a linisher, and tacked it into place. I was going to make these two videos, but I rolled it all into one. Um, but yeah, on Friday, I welded up um, the snorkel hole and the antenna hole in the other side of the car. Um, and it's time to put some paint down. So I didn't film a lot of the sanding, but there was a lot of it. So I've spent uh, two whole days now sanding. Um, the bulk of it was in these new panels which had the like the black keeping keeper holding primer whatever it's called on them um, and that's just been sitting out in the weather for too long got a bit of rust under it so i had to go back to bare metal uh, on both doors 
So you'll see this side as well is full bare metal. Uh, first I have to mask it all up, but then we'll put down a wet on wet primer and then we'll spray it in sandy top. Time for another cookie cutter cruiser, guys. Let's go. Masking up is really slow and a real painful job, but in my opinion, there is nothing worse than having paint on your window rubbers. So I like to take my time and do it properly. So what I've decided, um, instead of using my two-pack wet on wet primer, which I bought for all the painted surfaces, instead of that I'm going to hit all the bare metal with acid etch primer, um, which is, this is a Raptor brand acid etch primer, and then I'm not going to prime the rest of it. Where it was already good paint, it's all good to lay Raptor straight over that. Um, so yeah. Alright, so all the bare metal is uh, primed with the Raptor Etch Primer and so now I've got Raptor Adhesion Promoter. Um, I found a can of this in the 80 series actually and yeah, I didn't think I was going to need it but up in the rain gutters I couldn't really sand it properly so I'm going to whack this in there um, and there's some patches on like the little grills that I'm going to do as well. Um, so yeah, let's get stuck into that. Now the lockdown's over, there's just motorbikes going mad up this hill. Anyway, uh, adhesion promoter is done, and the main bit I was worried about is down in all these grills, um, a lot of little radiuses, and I just couldn't get in there with the 180 grit sandpaper. Um, but yeah, I think we're good to start mixing up the Raptor and get it done. So the color I'm going, I think I, I told this, I told you this a good while back, um, the colour we've got here is Toyota 4E9, so that is the old school sandy top, I'm not sure, bloody lighting, anyway, I'm not sure what the colour code is called these days, but this is an old colour code, um, it's called beige, Toyota beige 4E9, um, so yeah, let's mix it up. Basically with Raptor, the way you do it is, but they come in one litre bottles, but they're about 710 mils or something. And then you add 280 something mils of hardener. And then you add hundred mil of the color because this is a tintable kit. Um, shake it up and chuck it on the gun. And the gun I've gone for, for this, is the Raptor brand uh, Very Nozzle Gun. So it's got this little, this little guy here. So, oops, you can sort of, you can spin this out and it's got another locking nut. So you can, yeah, adjust your, your spray, I guess. And you're meant to be able to get a finer, um, yeah, a finer spray, finer texture, sorry, with this. So that's my plan. Um, yeah, let's get mixing and see how it goes.
Alrighty, there you have it. Fully wrapped 79 series. I think it's probably one of the first. So here it is. Damn. It looks that good, man. It looks really good with the sun on it as well. I got some shots of that this morning, so I'll play those now. But with the sun on this Raptor, it's a fairly fine texture. Um, really glad I got the variable gun. Um, Cause yeah, you can tell here, the texture's pretty nice. Um, yeah, pretty happy with that. So yeah, I've got to leave it a couple of days before I can start putting it back together. And I've got some plans um, to do a couple of the little pieces on the grill and stuff um, in Black Raptor. So you can see those on the ground just there. So you'll have to come back next week, uh, next week for that guys. But yeah, as always, thanks for watching, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.